The Second Part of Henry the Fourth by William Shakespeare. Act Five, Scene One. Gloucestershire, Shallow's House. Enter Shallow, Falstaff, Bardolph, and Page. By cock and pie, sir, you shall not away to-night. What, Davy, I say? You must excuse me, Master Robert Shallow. I will not excuse you. You shall not be excused. Excuses shall not be admitted. There is no excuse shall serve. You shall not be excused. Why, Davy! Enter Davy. Here, sir. Davy. 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 Let me see, Davy. Let me see, Davy. Let me see. Uh, yea, marry William Cook. Bid him come hither. Uh, Sir John, you shall not be excused. Marry, sir, thus. Those precepts cannot be served. And again, sir, shall we sow the headland with wheat? With red wheat, Davy. But for William Cook, are there no young pigeons? Yes, sir. Here is now the smith's note for shoeing and plough irons. Let it be cast and paid. Sir John, you shall not be excused. Now, sir, a new link to the bucket must needs be had. Sir, do you mean to stop any of William's wages about the sack he lost the other day at Hinkley Fair? He shall answer it. Some pigeons, Davy, a couple of short-legged hens, a joint of mutton, and any pretty little tiny kickshaws. Tell William Cook. Doth the man of war stay all night, sir? Yea, Davy, I will use him well. A friend in the court is better than a penny in purse. Use his men well, Davy, for they are arrant knaves and will backbite. No worse than that they are backbitten, sir, for they have marvellous foul linen. <laughs> well conceited, Davy, about thy business, Davy. I beseech you, sir, to countenance William Visor of one cot against Clement Perks o' the hill. There is many complaints, Davy, against that Visor. That visor is an arrant knave, on my knowledge. I grant your worship that he is a knave, sir. But yet God forbid, sir, but a knave should have some countenance at his friend's request. An honest man, sir, is able to speak for himself when a knave is not. I have served your worship truly, sir, this eight years, and I cannot once or twice in a quarter bear out a knave against an honest man. I have but a very little credit with your worship, the knave is mine honest friend, sir. Therefore I beseech you, let him be countenanced. Go to, I say, he shall have no wrong. Look about, Davy. Exit Davy. Where are you, Sir John? Come, 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 off with your boots. Give me your hand, Master Bardolph. I am glad to see your worship. I thank thee with all my heart, kind Master Bardolph. To the page. And welcome, my tall fellow. Come, Sir John. I'll follow you, good Master Robert Shallow. Exit Shallow. Bardolph, look to our horses. Exit Bardolph and Page. If I were sawed into quantities, I should make four dozen of such bearded hermit staves as Master Shallow. It is a wonderful thing to see the semblable coherence of his men's spirits in his. They, by observing of him, do bear themselves like foolish justices. He, by conversing with them, is turned into a justice-like serving man. Their spirits are so married in conjunction with the participation of society that they flock together in consent like so many wild geese. If I had a suit to Master Shallow, I would humour his men with the imputation of being near their master. If to his men, I would curry with Master Shallow that no man could better command his servants. It is certain that either wise bearing or ignorant carriage is caught as men take diseases one of another. Therefore let men take heed of their company. I will devise matter enough out of this shallow to keep Prince Harry in continual laughter the wearing out of six fashions, which is four terms or two actions, and he shall laugh without intervallums. <laughs> oh, it is much that a lie with a slight oath and a jest with a sad brow will do with a fellow that never had the ache in his shoulders. 
Oh, you shall see him laugh till his face be like a wet cloak, ill laid up. Within. Sir John! I come, Master Shallow. I come, Master Shallow. Exit. Scene two. Westminster, the palace. Enter, severally, Warwick and the Lord Chief Justice. How now, my Lord Chief Justice? Whither away? How doth the king? Exceeding well. His cares are now all ended. I hope not dead. He's walked the way of nature, and to our purposes he lives no more. Would his majesty had called me with him, the service that I truly did his life has left me open to all injuries. Indeed, I think the young king loves you not. I know he doth not, and do arm myself to welcome the condition of the time which cannot look more hideously upon me than I have drawn in my fantasy. Enter Lancaster, Clarence, Gloucester, Westmoreland, and others. Here comes the heavy issue of dead Harry. Oh, that the living Harry had the temper of he, the worst of these three gentlemen. Oh, God, I fear all will be overturned. Good morrow, cousin Warwick. Good morrow. Good morrow, cousin. We meet like men that had forgot to speak. We do remember, but our argument is all too heavy to admit much talk. Well, peace be with him that have made us heavy. Peace be with us, lest we be heavier. Oh, good my lord, you have lost a friend indeed, and I dare swear you borrow not that face of seeming sorrow. It is sure your own. Though no man be assured what grace to find, you stand in coldest expectation. I am the sorrier. Would twere otherwise. Well, you must now speak Sir John Falstaff fair, which swims against your stream of quality. Sweet prince, what I did, I did in honour, led by the impartial conduct of my soul. And never shall you see that I will beg a ragged and forestalled remission. If truth and upright innocency fail me, I'll to the king my master that is dead and tell him who hath sent me after him. Here comes the prince. Enter King Henry V, attended. Good morrow, and God save your majesty. This new and gorgeous garment, majesty, sits not so easy on me as you think. Brothers, you mix your sadness with some fear. This is the English, not the Turkish court. Not Amarath, and Amarath succeeds, but Harry, Harry. Yet be sad, good brothers, for by my faith it very well becomes you. Sorrow so royally in you appears that I will deeply put the fashion on and wear it in my heart. Why, then, be sad. But Entertain no more of it, good brothers, than a joint burden laid upon us all. For me, by heaven, I bid you be assured, I'll be your father and your brother too. Let me but bear your love, I'll bear your cares. Yet weep that Harry's dead, and so will I. But Harry lives, that shall convert those tears by number into hours of happiness. We hope no otherwise from your majesty. You all look strangely on me, and you most. You are, I think, assured I love you not. I am assured, if I be measured rightly, your majesty hath no just cause to hate me. No? How might a prince of my great hopes forget so great indignities you laid upon me? What? rate, rebuke, and roughly sent to prison, the immediate heir of England? Was this easy? May this be washed and lethe and forgotten? I then deduced the person of your father, the image of his power lay then in me, and in the administration of his law. Whilst I was busy for the commonwealth, your highness pleased to forget my place, the majesty and power of law and justice, the image of the king whom I presented, and struck me in my very seat of judgment. 
whereon, as an offender to your father, I gave bold way to my authority, and I did commit you if the deed were ill. Be you contented, wearing now the garland, to have a son set you decrees at naught, to pluck down justice from your awful bench, to trip the course of law and blunt the sword that guards the peace and safety of your person. Nay, more to spurn at your most royal image, and mock your workings in a second body. Question your royal thoughts, make the case yours. Be now the father and propose a son. Hear your own dignity so much profaned. See your most dreadful law so loosely slighted. Behold yourself by a son disdained. And then imagine me taking your part, and in your power, soft silencing your son. After this cold considerance, sentence me, and as you are a king, speak in your state. What I have done that misbecame my place, my person, or my liege's sovereignty. You are right, Justice, and you weigh this well. Therefore, still bear the balance and the sword. And I do wish your honours may increase, till you do live to see a son of mine offend you, and obey you, as I did. So shall I live to speak my father's words. Happy am I that have a man so bold, that dares do justice on my proper son, and not less happy having such a son, that would deliver up his greatness so, into the hands of justice. You did commit me for which I do commit into your hand the unstained sword that you have used to bear, with this remembrance, that you use the same with the like bold, just, and impartial spirit as you have done against me. There is my hand. You shall be as a father to my youth. My voice shall sound as you do prompt my ear, and I will stoop and humble my intents to your well-practiced, wise directions. And, princes all, believe me, I beseech you, my father is gone wild into his grave, for in his tomb lie my affections. And with his spirits sadly I survive to mock the expectation of the world, to frustrate prophecies, and to raise out rotten opinions who hath written me down after my seeming. The tide of blood in me hath proudly flowed in vanity till now. Now doth it turn and ebb back into the sea, where it shall mingle with the state of floods, and flow henceforth in formal majesty. Now call we our high court of parliament, and let us choose such limbs of noble counsel that the great body of our state may go in equal rank with the best governed nation, that war or peace or both at once may be as things acquainted and familiar to us, in which you, Father, shall have foremost hand. Our coronation done, we will excite, as I before remembered, all our state, and God consigning to my good intents no prince nor peer shall have just cause to say, God shorten Harry's happy life one day. Exeunt. Scene three. Gloucestershire, Shallow's Orchard. Enter Falstaff, Shallow, Silence, Bardolph, the Page, and Davy. Nay, you shall see my orchard, where, in an arbour, we will eat a last year's pippin of my own graffing, with a dish of caraways, and so forth. Come, cousin Silence, and then to bed. For God, you have been here a goodly dwelling and rich. Baron, 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 beggars all, beggars all, Sir John, marry, good air. Spread, Davy, spread, Davy. Well said, Davy. This Davy serves you for good uses. He is your serving man and your husband. A good varlet, a good varlet, a very good varlet, Sir John. Uh, by the mass, I've drunk too much sack at supper. A good varlet, 
Now, sit down. Now, sit down. Come, cousin. Ah, sirrah, quoth a we shall. Do nothing but eat and make good cheer and praise God for the merry year when flesh is cheap and females dear and lusty lads roam here and there so merrily and ever among so merrily there's a merry heart good master silence i'll give you a health for that anon give master bardolph some wine davy sweet sir sit i'll be with you anon most sweet sir sit master page good master page sit proface what you want in meat we'll have in drink but you must bear the heart's all exit be merry master bardolph and my little soldier there be merry be merry be merry my wife has all for women are shrews both short and tall tis merry in hall when beards wag and and welcome merry shrove tide be merry be merry i did not think master silence had been a man of this metal who i i have been merry twice and once ere now re-enter davy to Bardolph. There's a dish of leather coats for you. Davy. Your worship, I'll be with you straight. To Bardolph. A cup of wine, sir? A cup of wine, that's brisk and fine. And drink unto the leman mine. And a merry heart lives longer. Well said, Master Silence. And we shall be merry now comes in the sweet of the night. Health. And long life to you, Master Silence. Fill the cup, and let it come. I'll pledge you a mile to the bottom. Honest Bardolph, welcome. If thou wantst anything, and wilt not call, Beshrew thy heart. Welcome, my little tiny thief, And welcome indeed too. I'll drink to Master Bardolph, And to all the caballeros about London. I hope to see the London once ere I die. And I might see you there, Davy. By the mass, <laughs> you'll crack a quartz together, ha? <laughs> Will ye not, Master Bartolf? Hey, yes, sir, and a pot kettle. By God's liggins, I thank thee. The knave will stick thee, I can assure thee that. He will not out, he, tis true bread. And I'll stick by him, sir. Why, there spoke a king. Lack nothing, be merry. One knocks at door. Look, who's at door there, ho? Who knocks? Exit Davy. To silence, who has drunk a bumper. Why, now you have done me right. Do me right, and dub me night. Samingo, is not so? Tis so. Is so? Why then, say an old man can do somewhat. Re-enter Davy. And it please your worship, there's one pistol come from court with news. From the court? Let him come in. Enter Pistol. How now, Pistol? Sir John, God save you. What wind blew you hither, Pistol? Not the ill wind which blows no man to good. Sweet knight, thou art now one of the greatest men in this realm. Bar lady, I think I be, but good man Puff of Barson. Puff? Puff in thy teeth, most recreant coward base! Sir John. I am thy pistol and thy friend, and helter-skelter have I rode to thee, and tidings do I bring, and lucky joys, and golden times, and happy news of price. I pray thee now, deliver them like a man of this world. A voucher for the world, and worldlings base, I speak of Africa, and golden joys. O oh, base Assyrian knight, what is thy news? Let King Cofetua know the truth thereof. And Robin Hood, Scarlet, and John. Shall Dunghill curs confront the Helicons? And shall good news be baffled? And Pistol, lay thy head in Fury's lap. Honest gentlemen, I know not your breathing. Why then lament therefore? Give me pardon, sir. 
If, sir, you come with news from the court, I take it there's but two ways, either to utter them or conceal them. I am, sir, under the king, in some authority. Under which king, Bizonian? Speak, or die. Under King Harry. Harry the fourth, or fifth? Harry the fourth. A foutra for thine office, Sir John. Thy tender lambkin now is king. Harry the fifth, the man, I speak the truth. When pistol lies do this, and fig me like the bragging Spaniard. What, is the old king dead? Has nail in door. The things I speak are just. Away, Bardolph, saddle my horse. Master Robert Shallow, choose what office thou wilt in the land. Tis thine. Pistol, I will double charge thee with dignities. O oh, joyful day, I would not take a knighthood for my fortune. What do I bring good news? Carry Master Silence to bed. Master Shallow, my lord Shallow, be what thou wilt. I am Fortune's steward. Get on thy boots, we'll ride all night. O oh, sweet Pistol! Away, Bardolph. Exit Bardolph. Come, Pistol, utter more to me, and withal devise something to do thyself good. Boot, boot, Master Shallow. I know the young king is sick for me. Let us take any man's horses. The laws of England are at my commandment. Blessed are they that have been my friends, and woe to my lord Chief Justice. Let vultures vile seize on his lungs also. Where is the life that late I led, they say? Why, here it is! Welcome these pleasant days! Exit. Scene 4. London, a street. Enter beetles, dragging in hostess quickly, and doll tear sheet. No, thou errant knave, I would to God that I might die, that I might have thee hanged. Thou hast drawn my shoulder out of joint. The constables have delivered her over to me, and she shall have whipping cheer enough, I warrant her. There has been a man or two lately killed about her. No, Oak, no, Oak, you lie. Come on, I'll tell thee what, thou damned tripe-visaged rascal, and the child I now go with, dear Miss Carey, thou wert better thou would struck thy mother, thou paper-faced villain. Oh, the Lord that Sir John were come, he would make this a bloody day to somebody, but I pray God the fruit of her womb, Miss Carey. If it do, you shall have a dozen cushions again, but you have eleven now. Come, I charge you both to go with me, for the man is dead that you and Pistol beat amongst you. I tell you what, you thin man in a censer, I will have you as soundly swinged for this. You blue bottle rogue, you filthy, famished correctioner, if you be not swinged, I'll forswear half curls. Come, come, you she knight errant, come. Oh, God, that right should thus overcome might. Well, of sufferance comes ease. Come, you rogue, come, bring me to a justice. Aye, come, you starved bloodhound. Goodman death, goodman bones. Thou atomy, thou. Come, you thin thing. Come, you rascal. Very well. Exit. Scene 5. Westminster, near the Abbey. Enter groom, strewing rushes. More rushes, more rushes. The trumpets have sounded twice. "'Twill be two o'clock ere they come from the coronation. Dispatch, dispatch. Exit. Trumpets sound, and the king and his train pass over the stage. After them enter Falstaff, Shallow, Pistol, Bardolph, and Page. "'Stand here by me, Master Robert Shallow. I will make the king do you grace. I will leer upon him as he comes by, and do but mark the countenance that he will give me. "'God bless thy lungs, good knight.' Come here, Pistol. Stand behind me. To Shallow. Oh, if I had had to have made new liveries, I would have bestowed the thousand pound I borrowed of you. But tis no matter. This poor show doth better. This doth infer the zeal I had to see him. It doth so. It shows my earnestness of affection. It doth so. My devotion. It doth, it doth, it doth. As it were, to ride day and night, and not to deliberate, not to remember, not to have patience to shift me. It is best certain. But to stand stained with travel, 
and sweating with desire to see him, thinking of nothing else, putting all affairs else in oblivion, as if there were nothing else to be done but to see him. "'Tis semper oidum, for obsque hoc nihil est, tis all in every part. "'Tis so indeed. "'My knight, I will inflame thy noble liver and make thee rage. "'Thy doll, in Helen of thy noble thoughts, is in base durance and contagious prison, "'held thither by most mechanical and dirty hand. "'Rouse up revenge from Eben Dan with fell electo's snake, for doll is in.' Pistol speaks not but truth. I will deliver her. Shouts within, and the trumpets sound. There roared the sea, and trumpet clangor sounds. Enter the king and his train, the Lord Chief Justice among them. God save thy grace, King Hal, my royal Hal. The heavens thee guard and keep, most royal imp of fame. God save thee, my sweet boy. My Lord Chief Justice, speak to that vain man. Have you your wits? Know you what is you speak? My king, my Jove, I speak to thee, my heart. I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. How ill white hairs become a fool and jester. I have long dreamt of such a kind of man. So surfeit swelled, so old, and so profane. But being awaked, I do despise my dream. Make less thy body hence, and more thy grace. Leave gormandizing. No, the grave doth gape for thee thrice wider than for other men. Reply not to me with a fool-bomb jest. Presume not that I am the thing I was. For God doth know, so shall the world perceive, that I have turned away my former self. So will I those that kept me company. When thou dost hear I am as I have been, approach me, and thou shalt be as thou wast, the tutor and the feeder of my riots. Till then I banish thee, on pain of death, as I have done the rest of my misleaders, not to come near our person by ten mile. For competence of life I will allow you, that lack of beings enforce you not to evils. And as we hear you do reform yourselves, we will, according to your strength and qualities, give you advancement. Be it your charge, my lord, to see performed the tenor of our word. Exit the king and his train. Master Shallow, I owe you a thousand pounds. Yea, marry, Sir John, which I beseech you to let me have home with me. That can hardly be, Master Shallow. Do not you grieve at this. I shall be sent for in private to him. Look, you, he must seem thus to the world. Fear not your advancements. I will be the man yet that shall make you great. I cannot perceive how, unless you give me your doublet and stuff me out with straw. I beseech you, good Sir John, let me have five hundred of my thousand. Sir, I will be as good as my word. This that you heard was but a colour. A colour that I fear you will die in, Sir John. Fear no colours. Go with me to dinner. Come, Lieutenant Pistol. Come, Bardolf. I shall be sent for soon at night. Re-enter Prince John, the Lord Chief Justice, with officers. Go carry Sir John Falstaff to the fleet. Take all his company along with him. My lord, my lord. I cannot now speak. I will hear you soon. Take them away. See Fortuna me tormenta. Sparrow me contenta. Exit all but Prince John and the Lord Chief Justice. I like this fair proceeding of the King's. He hath intent his wanted followers shall all be very well provided for, but all are banished till their conversations appear more wise and modest to the world. And so they are. The King hath called his Parliament, my Lord. 
he hath... I will lay odds that ere this year expire, we will bear our civil swords and native fire as far as France. I heard a bird so sing, whose music to my thinking pleased the king. Come, will you hence? Exit. Epilogue. First my fear, then my curtsy, last my speech. My fear is your displeasure, my curtsy, my duty, and my speech to beg your pardons. If you look for a good speech now, you undo me, for what I have to say is of mine own making, and what, indeed, I should say, will, I doubt, prove mine own marring. But to the purpose, and so to the venture. Be it known to you, as it is very well, I was lately here in the end of a displeasing play, to pray your patience for it, and to promise you a better. I meant, indeed, to pay you with this, which, if like an ill venture it come unluckily home, I break, and you, my gentle creditors, lose. Here I promised you I would be, and here I commit my body to your mercies. Bait me some, and I will pay you some, and, as most debtors do, promise you infinitely. And so I kneel down before you, but indeed to pray for the queen. If my tongue cannot entreat you to acquit me, will you command me to use my legs? And yet that were but light payment to dance out of your debt. But a good conscience will make any possible satisfaction, and so would I. All the gentlewomen here have forgiven me. If the gentlemen will not, then the gentlemen do not agree with the gentlewomen, which was never seen before in such an assembly. One word more, I beseech you. If you be not too much cloyed with fat meat, our humble author will continue the story, with Sir John in it, and make you marry with fair Catherine of France, where, for anything I know, Falstaff shall die of a sweat, unless already I be killed with your hard opinions, for Oldcastle died a martyr, and this is not the man. My tongue is weary. When my legs are too, I will bid you good night. End of Act 5 End of the second part of Henry the Fourth by William Shakespeare.